Vera is at a crossroad. I believe Liberians have had issues in the past with leaders who come on the scene with a whole lot of promises, telling our people that they will help them through the difficulties, lying, saying things that they want those of us Liberians to hear, but deep down in their hearts, it's dark. For so many years, Liberians have suffered. And for some reason, I blame Liberians for what they go through. They allow those who come to them with lies and deceit to lead them as either the president or representative or senators or whatever else you might call it. And because of these bad decisions and bad choices, Liberians continue to suffer. We've gone through these things with many other leaders who've led Liberia since its inception. And Liberia today, we understand, is the oldest nation in Africa that was never colonized. But it is so lacking, it is so backwards, it is so undeveloped. And it seems like those who come on the scene with all of these lies fool the Liberian people. And then Liberians elect them into offices and as soon as they get the gavel in their hands, they turn their backs. We went through it for 12 years with Ellen Johnson Sirleaf. Now we've gone through it again for another six years. And I'm seeing this after the Civil War, because before the Civil War, when um, Tutman and Talbert and others, Backley and others were um, leading and, and ruling Liberia, we know it was a form of dictatorship. And we see that very circle happening again. The president decides who becomes the city mayor, who becomes superintendent of each county. This president decides almost everything. So then where do we find ourselves as citizens of Liberia? When it's election time, that's when we have the voice to speak out. When we decide who lead us, it is our choice. And when these leaders begin to treat us as nothing, as second class citizens or second class humans, we tend to complain. We find out today that there are so many people who are complaining about the present government in Liberia. We hear a lot of stories about what the government is doing, what people in Liberia are doing, what the police is not doing, and it's becoming so frustrating and, and so, so disturbing that sometimes we don't seem to understand why Liberians do what they do. When Charles Taylor came to power, or when he wanted power in Liberia, they said, you give my mind, you give my power, we vote for you. They voted for Charles Taylor, and we don't know what we got out of him. Now we got Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, who came in. We thought because she was um, globally known, and she worked at the United Nations and other places, she was going to do better. And at that time, let us not forget, there was so much money that was poured into Liberia. But we don't have anything to show for that much money that was given to that country, Liberia, our country, Liberia. After her 12 years, no light, no running water, roads were all broken up and they're still broken up. 
They got enough of what they wanted, lied to the Liberian people, voted her into power, and left the country half broke. Now Liberians decide to come up again and choose another leader and say, oh, he's an international soccer star. He's traveled the world. He might have ideas to come in and help Liberia to develop, to build our country. He was a poor man from Gibraltar, from Claratown, from West Point, from Nukutown and other places. Oh, he knows the plight of the Liberian people. People are suffering. This man, if we make him the president, things going to boom. Our life is going to be improved. As the late Talbot used to say, from mat to mattress. But the first six years, they didn't prove anything better. Now we are crying again. <laughs> Liberians are crying again. They want a leader. They are castigating the one that is there. They castigating the one that was there. And now they have decided to go with the revolving door. To begin to recircle again. Somebody who was there as vice president told Ellen Johnson Sirleaf that many people say was corrupt. And you know one thing I want us to understand? You know, a lot of you who defend the former vice president always make the statement, oh, you know, he wasn't the president. But guess what? He wasn't the president, but he was in the room when decisions were being made. Almost everything that Ellen Johnson Sirleaf did Mr. Boykai knew about it. And no one can argue about that. Unless he was in lo-fi when she was making decisions. Or unless he was sleeping when she was making decisions. Because he was the vice president. As I understand, people said that he, Boykai said, there were opportunities that we squandered. So if a person tells you there was opportunity that he squandered or they squandered, then you can imagine he was part of the decision making. Why would you want to recycle such person to be the president of our country, Liberia, when we have suffered and are still suffering? People cannot find food to eat. No medication in hospitals. Was it far better when Ellen was there? Is it left far better now than six years ago? Yeah, maybe. Maybe she paid people a little bit more. But Liberia, there was nothing actually that changed when Ellen was there with Joseph Boycott being her vice president. I was watching a video recently in Joseph Boycott's home. I looked there and he had a dilapidated house and he had to go and rent another house from someone else. So when he go to his town, that's where he stays. No good road going to his town. The road going to Lofa is so terrible. What you people see in this man that you all have decided to vote him in power. And I think we already heard it more. His vice presidential pick. You see, that's where you need to know the, 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 the level of, 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 of decision making. If you are making decision for over 5 million people. And you begin or you made some choice like Mr. Kuhn. I was listening to Spoon talk the other night and I heard him speak. I am not a perfect English man. I'm not from England or I don't speak Queen English. But we understand Mr. Boyga is old. According to Prince Johnson, he has Pacer in his heart. We don't know how long he's going to be around. Are you all sure? Are you all sure that Mr. Cohn is able to lead Liberia? We have heard stories about him. Stories. Terrible stories about him. And you all are willing to sacrifice Liberia again? To give it to someone? Who... English seems to be a problem. Are you all sure he ought to sit in the room 
with other world leaders and put his message across because when he was being interviewed on Spoon Network, things that he was saying, in fact, he didn't answer most of the questions that was asked. He began to beat around the bush, as librarians say, and say things that were not even pertaining to the questions that was asked. So Joseph Wecker picking this guy to be his vice president. Do you see where the problem is? Is this the kind of decision that's going to be made for Liberians or on behalf of Liberians to choose somebody? You know, and, and it, it is so it is so astonishing to even hear political leaders fighting over um, Senator Lawrence, um, uh, Yombli's, uh, Kenga Lawrence, Lawrence. Everybody wants her to be there vice presidential pick I, I don't know her i've never met her i see her on youtube but what have she really done what have she brought to the table that caused the anc the the, the cpp um which is the same cpp um unity party um everybody else seems to uh, um gonglo everybody wants this woman to be the vice president and now look what she did. She decided to go to Unity Party. And they have this rivalry going on with the Liberty Party. You know, it, it is just so frustrating when you all decide to remove George Weir, who we know have failed our country, have failed our people because the promises were all empty promises. And now you all who are trying to move him not going to start to fight and do a talk of war because everybody won the gravy. As I said in one of my videos, Liberia has become a town elephant. Everybody wants to take what they can get out of Liberia. So now instead of us, uh, the opposition trying to unite and come together as a coalition to form one fight against this man, George Weir, we are fighting among ourselves. But in fact, I'm not part of it. So I won't, I won't even include myself. So that was a mis I misspoke. How can we, how can you all remove George Weir from office when you all are fighting among yourselves? George Weir is going to win again because of the opposition attitude, their behavior. Look at the situation that we have with CPP. They go have gone to court, they are fought among themselves. But you know what? Mr. Cummings is an educated man. Mr. Cummings has sat with people, I believe, on boards. I know Fagon and others have discredited him, tried to discredit him because he was on this board and he was on that board and whatever he did. But I didn't hear that he did anything wrong while on these boards, whether he stole money. Or what he did that was wrong yeah it, it's a decision making place when you go into a ballroom but did he have his hands on money or it was the decision that he made was bad because if those who are on the other side say that the decision that mr cummings made maybe while uh, being board member for chevron and other places what's the decision that mr Boyka made by choosing mr cone as his vice presidential mate and even for those Liberians to even support Mr. Boeka, knowing he was vice president for 12 years on oh, no, Elliot Johnson's leave, how can you tell me they better go burn by the beer they didn't burn? Burn. Because when he was a part and parcel of Elliot Johnson Sirleaf's government, whatever happened that time or in those days or those years, he was a part and parcel of it. So you want us to have Elliot Johnson for the second time? Is that what we are telling ourselves? If we feel that Elliot did not do very good? They didn't do a great job for Liberia. We need to think. Be very Liberia is at a crossroad right now. October 10th gonna decide whether we suffer or whether life become better for Liberians. We are at a crossroad. So when people come to you with sweet talk, people come to you and feel that oh, because this man is more popular, or maybe he got more people following him, so I'm gonna you know, jump on the bandwagon and follow. You might be making the saddest mistake of your life. 
because life going to be more difficult for you. All those who are trying to support work, work out, they got a reason. They have the reason why they are supporting Boyka because they want to lick some of the gravy because the gravy train they believe will soon pick up. Mr. Cummins is one person that Liberians need to think about. And I say think about. Look at his track records. Yeah, maybe he was not senator. He never became representative. But he did some great things for humanity. I didn't even know that he was on these many boards. I mean, I'm here in Atlanta. He's on Clark Atlanta University board. He's not handling the money. So we need to rethink when people come to us to ask us to vote for them. Don't look at the popularity. Look at what that person can do, what they have done, their track record, and what they can do. Don't go and choose somebody who don't even have a fitting road going to his town. Don't even have a fitting house to live in his own town. Don't do that. Look for somebody who will try to lift you up, help you, give you a bill, give you jobs, bring investors into the country. Cummings can do it. And, and you know, I, I'm saying it, and it's the truth. But he's not my first pick. Cummings is not my first choice. But I know that he is up to, this, to, to, to do the work and do it very well. Alexander B. Collins, ABC. I'm sure if Collins become Cummings become the president of Liberia, Liberia would be far better. They call him Fixer One. Even though I don't know what he's going to be fixing, what, what he had fixed before and what he's going to be fixing, but I know with his expertise, with his education, with his exposure, I believe Mr. Cummings could be one of the best presidents Liberia could ever get. You know, and let's look at Mr. Gonglo. Mr. Gonglo worked as Labor Minister under Ellie Johnson Salif. Many people believe that he's, he's talking about the rule of law, which is a perfect thing. But you know, I was listening to an interview last night from Focus on Liberia when they were interviewing him. And I was dismayed. I was disappointed because many of the questions that were asked were not answered. He went along making, telling stories. Every question that was asked, he didn't answer the question, but he told stories. <laughs> I don't understand what we are thinking Liberians. And I see there are people supporting him. Yeah, you can support him. But this person, Mr. Gonglo, Councillor Gonglo, do you think he really have what it takes to be a leader of Liberia, to lead our country, to be the president of Liberia, when he can't even answer a fitting question? He kept deviating and saying things going around the bush and going around in circle, and then he would come with a long story, and he would tell stories to think that he's answering the question? No. No. We need to be careful. As I said, we are at a crossroad. Liberia, we are at a crossroad. We need to be careful who we choose October 10th to become the president of our country. Who will lead us for the next six years or 12 years? I don't think Liberia is going to have a problem if any other president comes in and will want to rule for 12 years. Even though I know 12 years is just a stretch because 12 years is just too much. Why would you want to give somebody 12 years of leading your country so you're giving me the chance to steal more? That's what it is. Or six years. To steal more in America is four years and you are out. They give you the second term. If you can make it, you go for eight years, you are out. Small country like Liberia. Liberia, we gave him a president, a person six years for the first time, six years, 12 years. What do they do in 12 years? The first six years, they don't do nothing. That's the last six years they're going to do something when they know they can't go back there as president. Liberians, let's be smart. Let's learn from our past. Let's learn from our mistake. Decision making is very pertinent to issues of a nation. The decisions you make is the one that carry the country further or bring the country behind. The decision that is made by the head of state. Because when the legislature decides something and they send it to his desk, he has to look at either to veto it or to sign it. So the final decision is with him. But let's look at this young man, Dr. Clarence Maniba. The son 
Actually, the youngest son, the last son of the late vice president, Harry Moneba. This is a young man, 44 years old, who, are, who, who is learned, has a PhD. I know a lot of people say, oh, they educated people, they didn't want to spoil our country. They didn't want to spoil our country. But the man who's president now, he said he has a master's degree. What is he doing for Liberia? What has he done for Liberia? The roles he's making started from Ellen Johnson's study time and he's tried to extend it. And this young man, this man who's 44 years old, Mr. Moneyba, Clarence Moneyba, was the one who even advocated out of Liberia to be able to bring in money to see if they could build Broward International um, Airport and, and, and Road to build some of these roads that are going on, the LEC stuff. He was the one who was a part and parcel of the decision making and he traveled the world over to be able to raise support and bring it into our country. I was listening to his interview the other day on Spoon Talk. He mentioned that he need over $2 billion to be able to fix all the roads in Liberia. This man have sat with President Obama, with uh, 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 with Tony Blair and, and, and these, these renowned presidents and the United Nations, he bring consulting to, uh, to other places. I believe that we should begin to think about Clarence Monobar. Let us not overlook him. Let us not overlook this man. He has the expertise. He got the knowledge. He has the platform. I listened to his platform. I listened to what he said when he was asked. He was very fluent. In speaking, he did not startle, he, he didn't break, he spoke fluently because he knows exactly what he wants for Liberia. He said that the change Liberia needs now is him. Why don't we take him with a grain of salt and support this young man to become the president of our nation? I believe this man will bring change to our country. I, I have no doubt about it. I'm a, very, I'm a person who's very hard to decide. To decide who, you know, I would want to support. But I've listened to everybody speak. I've listened to Clarence Monoba. And listening to the way he answered his questions. He never beat around the bush. He hit the nail on the head. Remember Liberians. Liberia is at a crossroad. Are we going to blow it again in October? On the 10th of October? Are we going to blow it again? Or this time we need to make a good decision. Everyone comes with their ideas. They want to lead Liberia. But I want you to begin to check their background. Check who they are. What they have done. Don't continue to recycle corrupt people. You know, one thing that I was so taking it back about doing the late Samuel Kayan's do government and many other governments that we've had in the past, they will fire somebody with corrupt and they will fire the person for the final ministry and they will send that person as director to LPRC or they will just change, reshuffle them like you own a checkerboard. Instead of removing those people, prosecuting them for stealing and dealing with them and take every property that they have that they stole to, to, to purchase, they recycle them. They send them somewhere else on the checkerboard. Is that the same thing Liberians are willing to do again with Joseph Boykai? And for George Weir, he's out because actually I don't even want to talk about him because we know he has failed Liberia. He has failed the people of Liberia. He has even failed the international community. So I'm not talking. George Weir, he said it. Just the other day he was in Claratown. He said, I didn't want to be that the people made me to be. And he said, you got a fingerprint everywhere. Maybe the parks that he built are a fingerprint. While people are suffering, maybe it could be a fingerprint too. Everybody's selling the market now. Who's going to buy from each other? Maybe that is fingerprint. I don't know, but he said a fingerprint is everywhere. Maybe the extrajudicial killing that's going on in Liberia could be a fingerprint. I don't know. The police don't even have the support. How can you take a man who don't know anything about policing and make him the director for police? The same problem we have today with Gawo from the city, city hall. Liberians, when are we going to rethink our, 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 our priorities and make sure that we choose the right person? That we just don't put anybody there. Somebody maybe that we say 
we don't really know, but that person could be our savior. That person could be the one. He could be the chosen one. So let's give them the chance. Don't recycle. Move on. Because when you continue to recycle, you will get the same thing. That's why insanity is. Doing the same thing and expecting different results. That's insanity. You cannot. You cannot keep putting the same people in power. Giving George Real six more years. Or giving Joseph Boycott six years or 12 years. And then those who could do the work like Cummings. Like Mr. Money, uh, Dr. Moneyba, give these people the chance. That's my appeal. Let's give these people the chance to see what they can do. They might come here with new ideas, with new ideas, with these old ideas that we always had. It, it, it have it have hurt us. It has filled us. Why should we continue just recycling the same thing over and over and over again and again and again? It is time, librarians, that we lift our head up high. Think for ourselves. Look at the life we live and see if we want to be better off. Let's choose the right person. For Liberia is at a crossroad.